Anti-apartheid activist and former South African politician Ahmed Kathrada maintains that he was just a follower, a teenager with an air of self-importance who got swept up in the struggle. And when the time for tough decisions came, he followed iconic leaders like Nelson Mandela and Walter Susulu. At Jack and News spent a morning with Kathrada, affectionately known as Kathy by some, in his Johannesburg home. As he reclines in his favourite chair, he recalls the struggle against apartheid, his imprisonment on Robben Island and the pain of losing those closest to him. Kathrada's political involvement started at the age of 12 in Fordsburg, handing out pamphlets. He says at that age, you're fearless. You get swept into, into things as they come. Whatever sounds adventurous, what sounds brave. In those years you didn't need, need to be too brave. But you get swept into it without thinking, just because it was dangerous. He was imprisoned for the first time at the age of 17 in Durban while occupying land that was earmarked for whites. From there, he had several run-ins with the law as he took part in the apartheid struggle, finally becoming one of the accused in the now-famous Rivonia trial. Kathrada says it was legal at that stage to detain people for 90 days, and he explains just how difficult it was. It's, it's a difficult uh, period that, because you're alone, you're not allowed to speak to your colleagues at all. You, you, you're in your cell alone, with nothing to read, uh, just your thoughts of death. And you've got to build up your strength in, that, in those circumstances, not to break down. Kathrada says police would try to convince them to give out information, either by using evidence against them or by lying, or in some cases making use of torture. I never was tortured, never. Uh, only on one occasion, Swanapur came near to ass- assaulting me, he didn't. So I survived all that. Uh, but you have in mind other examples. People have broken down. And you, you don't hold it against them. He explains that when they saw their lawyers for the first time after the 90 day detention, they were told to prepare for the worst, which they knew meant the death penalty. Katrada says they were lucky to have senior ANC leaders like Nelson Mandela and Walter Susulu amongst them, and under their guidance, the tone for the trial was set. It wasn't criminal, but political. So that's how the whole case was conducted until the very last day of sentence when we went to court to be sentenced. We went fully prepared to be sentenced to death. Kathrada explains that despite their sentence and the continuing struggle, they were always sure of victory. So if you go to Romaland and even today on the penguin, near the penguin boardwalk, you'll find a uh, concrete, big block of concrete, and while it was wet, somebody had scribbled, which is still legible. A and C is sure of victory, 1967. So what I'm saying, the optimism uh, never left us. We are going to win, regardless. Despite his role in the struggle against apartheid, Kathrada maintains he wasn't a leader, only a follower. I followed my iconic leaders. I can't ever claim to have been a leader of anything. I was always a rank and file, of which I still am, uh, or a member of the ANC. After spending almost three decades in jail, they were released in October 1989. Kathrada describes that their release was sudden and explains that his first memory outside of jail was that of children and their curiosity with him. They don't know what a prisoner is. All they've heard is this chap has been in prison, he's an ex-prisoner. So to them is a curiosity, they want to feel you. They want to pull your hair, <laughs> everything. And that's what I experienced. But obviously on the first day of the release, uh, it was a blank, complete blank. Fortunately, a nephew of mine had video 
which I saw subsequently. Otherwise, the first day was a blank in my mind. It was completely overwhelming. Kathrada had a close relationship with both Nelson Mandela and Walter Susulu. He says doing their obituaries were the saddest two moments of his life. When Walter died, my father died, I could turn to him for the most private things. Walter died. Now you are dead. Who do I turn to? That's how I ended. Up to now, I don't know. I just haven't got anybody in my life who I could turn to. In closing, Kathrada gives a message to the next generation, reminding us that freedom didn't fall from heaven. Freedom was fought for me. Freedom was sacrificed for me. Many people, Chris Hani and all these, didn't live to see the freedom. So with freedom comes responsibility.